In this video, you'll learn how to create and customize summaries to be displayed within group rows and group footers. You'll also see the built-in context menus and dialogues that allow end users to add, remove, or customize group summaries. Finally, you'll learn how to add group summaries in code. Let's start with an application that has a grid control with data already grouped. To create a group summary that calculates the number of records in each group, invoke the grid designer and switch to the Group Summary Items page and add a new item to the list. By default, the values will be displayed within group rows, and we want to keep it that way for this summary. Now set the Summary Type property to Count. As the Count function simply calculated the number of records in each group, you can leave the field name property empty. Let's also use default text formatting for this summary. And let's run the application. You can see group rows display the number of records within corresponding groups. And let's return to design time. Go to the Group Summary Items Designer page and add a new item. This summary item will calculate the maximum values in the unit price column that will be displayed in group footers under that same column. So set both the field name and show in group column footer properties to unit price. Then set the summary type property to max. Finally, customize the display format of the summary value by setting the display format property. And let's run the application. Expand the top group row to see its group footer with the newly created summary item in it. If group footers are visible, end users can change existing group summaries or create new ones using built-in context menus. Let's right-click the summary item and change the type to minimum. The summary value is immediately updated. Now, right-click a group footer cell under the count column and choose max, thus adding a new summary item. To hide an existing group summary, right-click and select none. Using the property grid, set the summary type property back to max and customize the summary's display format. If you change the field name property to order sum, you'll get a summary value calculated against values in the order sum field. You can also move the summary to another columns footer or to group rows using the show in group column footer property. Since there are no group summaries to be displayed within group footers, footers disappear automatically. And return to design time. Select the grid view, expand its options view property, and set the group footer show mode to visible always. And run the application again. Now group footers are displayed for each group, regardless of whether there are summary items to be displayed or whether the group row is expanded or collapsed. You can also enable the built-in UI so that end users can create group summaries to be displayed in group rows. Expand the view's options menu property and enable the show group summary editor item option. Let's run the application and right-click the grouping column header. Select Group Summary Editor to invoke the Summary Editor dialog. Locate the Order Sum column in the list of available columns, select the Average checkbox, and click OK. Now, group rows display an additional summary with average values calculated against the Order Sum column. Finally, let's create a new group summary in code. There's already a Create Summary button in the ribbon control. Write the button's click event handler, which creates a new grid group summary item object, specifies its required properties, and adds it to the view's group summary collection. And let's run the application and click the Create Summary button. A new group footer summary appears under the Order Sum column. 